the line was just like, you are joking. It's not happening. It's not happening. And we said, you know what? We want to hear your story. We really want to have you here on the show. So she said, it's okay, Becky. I can actually come through. And her boss, in all her grace, says, you know what, Thelma? Go and have this interview. So boss lady, we want to thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for you know making sure that Thelma was in studio with us for this She Diaries interview. So I'll read briefly about who Thelma is and why she is our She Diaries guest today. Thelma Adiboke Chuma is a 29-year-old young lady, program manager for Edmund Garwe Trust, motivational and inspirational speaker, young activist for HIV and mental health, counselor, actress, voiceover actor, and also co-author of Beyond and Behind the Faces of HIV and AIDS and Business Woman. She is also a member of Pan-African Positive Women's Coalition, Together Help Another Woman, and Loud Silence and Renewal. Ladies and gentlemen, pulses all over, put your hands together and help me welcome Thelma. And the crowd goes wild, Thelma, Thelma, Thelma. Ah, uh, unga kadi zela Thelma. Don't cry, girl. Don't cry. Unless it was tears of joy. Yeah, they're tears of joy. <laughs> Are they tears of joy? Yes. Okay, then we're good. If they're tears of joy, then we are on the same page, <laughs> on the same. You know, at this rate, if you're crying like this, you want me to share my chocolate with you, it's not happening. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going there. And tomorrow, I never, I never. Get, aren't you so how it happened? Aren't you so how it happened? Sharing is cutting for Landot. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll see how the interview goes. Oh, okay. Because right now, your tears, I'm like, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? No, Maybe my, I should eyes share. are that dramatic. Oh, your eyes are just... <laughs> Um, your eyes are just watering. They're just watering. Your eyes. Like I saw Mox just a minute ago. They were like this. No, oh. these are just dramatic pretty. No, but we are, we are so happy to have you here, Thelma. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, thank you. And you know what? I was so sad I wasn't able to talk to you last week. I was really eager to to hear you, yeah. right? Not just to speak to you, but to to hear you. Like to get inside Thelma's head, inside Thelma's heart, especially. You've been through a lot, um, and you were 29 years old. Yes. When you look back at your life, what are you most thankful for? Uh, I got strength. Mm -hmm. Like uh, between um, like how I found out about it, how I got uh, how how I found out that I've got HIV was just an uh, like like you're the critical moment of your life then it's mm -hmm. like boom in your face how and old were you when you i was it? 16. like like a month and a half before my oliver is done and everything was just fine just everything just went what yeah not bad like what are you like what kind of like if like because i had to go back home but the nuns noticed i used to notice the good thing i was going to i used to notice the good thing i was going to i I was in book mode, I wanted to pause. Like everybody from once I'll tell you that the nuns were gonna school you like the like they just made us what book home like I can mm -hmm. say. Mm -hmm. And dad also like a literally like and some of home as my kids call me sometimes. My baby's from church and baby said okay. So like I was in book mode, like we want all want to do at ten A's, love and A's and boom, this comes in my face and like like ah uh, would you care to share how it happened? Okay, uh, so like, and I said a month and a half before my Oliver exam, that was 2010. Mm -hmm. I was in Monte Cristino, and yeah, I was a program, I can say. Yeah, I agree, mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a film, you're a tanda. So, like, literally, I don't know, because, you know, I felt I was okay. I didn't feel anything was wrong. But whatever that day, that's why I was saying, Asha, like, the toughest nun in the, the, nun in the school mm -hmm. literally begged me to eat. Because the matron had just noticed, but I, I, I was drinking water. <laughs> okay, so you, 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 were, you were drinking water, but you were but not eating. Like, taking any food at yeah, all. Yeah, because my mom said, they if I know what they're lying or not, you should eat. Mm -hmm. So that was, I, that was my, what my mom taught me. Because respect food, whatever you have, don't yeah, complain. Food. Like, yeah. you know, you're like, well, the people, they touch your touch, what you know, right? That's right. So, like, I, like food, I'll never complain. Other subjects on PV, whatever I was there, I would eat. Even if it's a small portion, I would eat. 
So my mom, she was like, ah, oh, she wrote something, saying I shall literally beg me to eat. Then I found daddy was waiting for me, like, around a minute later, coming from a trunk room. I'm like, but I did not say anything, but I'm like, what is going on? And then, cause I thought people were joking, that people were just around for the shisha, she. Now, now you see, it's like people just. My body is going to do my job. Exactly. So I'm like, hi, wow. Look how much my brain is angry. And then Brenda comes, she's like, oh, masha. I'm like, your dad is waiting for you. She's like, she's like, masha is angry. I'm so angry. I'm like, can't see why. Dad gets there. I went home. Like, I noticed when I got to her, I was okay. Come on, you're sick. Literally, you know where she know he is. That's where my GP is. Like that actually literally holds my hand because I was so I So I thought mm. good, okay, something is really wrong. Well there are school, there's no traffic, there are no many people. But when they go to the C B D like with that, I'm like, okay, Thelma, something is wrong. And then I'm like, okay, the GP was like, I asked and I went for now, I was not lied for the first time. Okay, let me just hold you there. Yes. So had you been sick for some time? And you were not so sure <coughs> what was wrong, or was it that within that week you got sick for a few days, and your dad had to be called in, or did your dad come because they discovered you were not? Well? I will no, never know. I just saw that dad was waiting for me. I don't know what happened that day. W were you sick in that week? Were you not feeling well in that week? I just is speaking. I do not know because I was in a full coma. The nuns noticed that something was wrong. And the truth is, something was wrong. Okay, so the nuns noticed there was something wrong. They yes. called your father, yes. and they said, Yeah. Uh -huh. Baba yes. Book 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 I'm looking all, and then I then go to the GP who could not find what was going on because he kept saying it's asthma, but I could literally my asthma came from me coughing to literally getting that normal attacks which I never had before. Okay, so you, my, you had asthma already. Yeah, my asthma was me just coughing like like very badly, but now it was like you know how people don't like the normal people go like to go breathless, and for me I would go breathless. I started getting incontinence, my urine was starting to coming out, like my whole body was shutting down, like there. Mm. I started getting migraines. It was at 16. At 16. And then dad goes, like, my Um, the numb, I think you should get tested. I'm like, Fanta Mara, he had been saying so for the past few years, but. As in get tested? Yeah, like, and then he would bring it up more often, but I just used to not see why, because one, I know boyfriends, two, I was a virgin freaking all the time when we were And you were like, why am I getting tested? I'm like, Dad, it, it's a meaningless go I only want two boys and I can't say I don't do that. So I literally brush it off so many times, but then you were like, was like, then you said, I was going to party right now. And for that time, I turned out in course, my wife, my aim was to go back to school. Mm -hmm. Then we went to a party. I remember that day because, yo, I was in the course, I want to go back to Monte. Then I got tested, like there was a lot of pregnant women, I remember. Mm -hmm. They were also getting tested, because what? They wanted to see before what? before they give birth. And then she comes with the, the results. Then she shows me. I look at them, I look at her. Yeah, she's called Ruten, I remember. <laughs> I, I remember her name, I remember. Oh, no. I, I don't remember her face, but I remember her name. Mm. I'm like, that is not, I literally threw her in her face. And I was, I, I did not cry then, but I literally refused them. And then I said, these are not my I was results. like, these are not my results, like a little teen. And then dad had to say, had to really calm me down, but I wanted a read that, I wanted a read test. And then dad explained over to me when I was crazy, I was like, when I was born with complications, what, what, what. But in my head, it didn't make sense, you know, but all this time I had to be sick all my life. How did you feel at that point when you were dead now? Um, said, okay, Thelma, listen, when you were born, there were complications. So all along, the times when you were saying get tested, he knew that there was something up. Exactly. How did you feel in that moment? <laughs> you like, oh, that, that. I'm like, one thing, I know that I did nothing at home. I know that I'm a virgin. I know that I tell my pooch and then this happened from nowhere, Jay. 
So did Dad explain? Oh, he just said how that you contracted it. Okay. Yeah, yes, there were complications when you were born. Did, did did Mom have it? Was it Dad who had it? And then did they pass it on to you? I don't did know you grow that. up with it and only discover at sixteen? What did Dad mean? I don't know. Up to now, because when I get home, he was all quiet. Like up to now, he should have passed away with all. I it all it's up. Yeah, he passed away twenty sixteen. Oh, I'm yeah, sorry. Up, no, it's I'm okay. Sorry. So up to now, I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, someone I'm like, okay, so, like, if maybe I had found out earlier, like, maybe I'll have a fighting chance, because the thing is, everything since then went spiraling down, I don't want to lie, because I remember I went to make two more take, because I remember that day. And you even went back to school with that news. I had to, because I wanted to write my exams, Pella. Are you on a book? I know, Pella. <laughs> you are on a book. No, the it's thing is, is I, mean, like, uh, it, it, I, I didn't have to do what I wanted to do today. You thought I know I was going to fight me. Because yeah. literally, I went, then I still was getting asthma attacks. I'm in shock. And I remember that day, my literature teacher called. Of course, would call every day. And I won't forget her words. She's like, baby, Thelma, I know you were told this. But no one thing, you will still be my child. That the condition does not define you. And those words up to now, when I remember them, they keep me strong. So, yeah, as much as it's so complicated, confusing, yeah? Like her words, because she never taught me literature, she taught the next class. So, I'm like, I'm like to myself, but, but why? And then from there, not bad, like yes. And then I failed. The next year, I was, um, Dad convinced me to repeat at a school near close to home mm -hmm. in my institute. And I was a boarder for four years, crying out loud. Dude, I do not know how it's like to be a day scholar. And then after two, like a term I was getting used. Then this dude from Neuro School decides to molest me. <laughs> No, Thelma. No, it's okay, serious. Okay, let's, <laughs> let's just slow it down a bit. You are like gliding through this. Okay, okay, I don't know okay, if, okay. It's, if it's because maybe you've dealt with it already. Like, okay, this happened to me and I don't want to relive these moments to explain and everything. But you were, you were violated. And it, it's not right. Yep. It wasn't... It, um, it wasn't supposed to happen to you, yep. especially with the news that you had just received. Mm -hmm. And then dad says, okay, mate, I think I need to watch you or whatever the reason it was mm -hmm. that he took you out of a boarding school and yep. take you to a day school. And you were like, I know the boarding life. Take me back. back yeah. Yes, four years in boarding school. And you're like, Baba, please, Nankiri, please, Nakela. And then you come out of that boarding school and I got violated. And then you got violated. Yeah. So this guy, was it someone within the family? Was it a no. passerby? Was it... Yeah, somebody who worked near us. Well, I'd see him almost every day coming from Lima. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. And at this time, you're what, 17? Yeah, 17 days. Okay. And after he molested you, did you report it? Did you tell anyone? Yeah, I was confused. So I didn't even know if it was because then I was 17. But lucky enough, I had a friend, like uh, a close family friend, because where I stayed, we're almost like mm -hmm. a, a small community at Daniko. So I talked to my friend, Shaz. I should I, I ask her, could you, Shaz, if somebody does ABC to you when you're 17, is that brave? So I didn't literally tell her. I asked her ask her a question. Oh. And then I think she kind of put in the dots together. Because when I called on my dad, I didn't know how to tell dad because I was already quite a Where was mom? Mom passed away when I was eight. Ma okay, so mom passed away when you were eight? Yes. And uh, how many siblings are you in your, in your family? We had three. You were three. So mom passes away when you were eight. Uh, leaves dad with three children. Mm -hmm. uh, did dad remarry? Uh, yeah, kind of. I can't say. <laughs> no, I, I don't. 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 I
kind of kind of kind of kind of like yeah kind of remarried kind of remarried kind of kind let's put it in quotes kind of remarried kind of yes. and then um dad is taking care of you making sure that you're okay because obviously he knows something yeah right dad obviously knows something that only almost like lets you in on what he knows at mm. the age of 16 mm. and at that doesn't even fully explain to you what it is you get molested and you still struggle to open up to your dad when you look at the father-daughter relationship you obviously have like a different perspective um to it no the funny thing is we were close but in that time i did not know how to approach him because the thing i don't know that part i don't i do not know how to explain it to him because I don't know whether I was, because my thing is, we were close, because he told me to, but he told me, like, the boys say I'm the money person in the family. Mm -hmm. I learned it from dad. I learned how to shop. I learned how to even to be the young, tattoo the mother of the house, like, because they do to what, make me what, they, they do the cause she at home, that's how I put it, actually. But that moment, I did not know, because what, because before, it could not explain to me how I got HIV. So I don't know, I don't know who to talk to about that too. And it was, I don't know, I was just scared. Okay. It's a pro to go to that team. I was out of the way of what you have been. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, 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 if you were to advise, say, a parent listening now with the teenager, what would you advise them uh, in creating an, an environment where your children can open up? Yeah. I would actually advise them to talk to their kids. Like, even just a how are you, how was school thing. I do that at home with it, but like, like my, 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 the, 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 so I know how to post always ask questions in your head and you don't know who to talk to. So parents should ask. Yeah, parents should ask. They parents. sound like plutonic questions, but I have a bunzai. Bunzai, like, school. how was school? Nine, like, what, 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 like, are you really, really okay? Mm. Even just that hug, like, really some kids, kids love hugs, trust me. I was in school once with my sister, I'm like, give us hugs. I'm like, I, I don't, before, the, before they stop crying, I'm like, come get your hug. I don't talk about what happened first, because it was, and they don't put, and someone says, yeah, come, come, come. Then when they cool down, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. They're not cool, but then cause when they know come, cause I know pretty kids also go through stuff. Kids also get scared. Much yeah, but one of that. But trust me, those kids also go tension. They go through bullying. They also go through a lot. Right. They also human beings. Cause they can't move out. They have to know they were like really. Yeah. Cause yeah. Saka, so my experience told me could be, if I could feel that when I was actually from pop, the time mom passed me could be, or ask myself could be so. Is she gonna come back? Did she die because I was naughty? Because I told my she died because I was naughty. Okay, so you thought your mom died when you were eight, or eight years old. Exactly. You thought your mom died because you were naughty. Exactly. Oh my. Then at the time I was like, then there was a time when I was putting to every college like a mama, auntie, like, my mother's, and they kind of just shut it all out. But like enough, daddy would write letters all the time. So I would beg with her, they don't want to go to town by every day. So your relationship with your dad is on like the bittersweet side of things. Like, yeah, it was like, he was a good guy, dying. but Christian Mark was <laughs> done. Christian Mark. All right, so let's fast forward. Um, uh -huh. This is you now done with school, done with high school. Um, what was your mental state like now after discovering, okay, this is what has happened to me. We need to move on. We can't stay in this state of feeling sorry for ourselves. What was that moment that made you wake up to say, Thelma, do something with your life? Because as we read through your profile, you're a um, motivational speaker, an inspirational speaker. You're a young activist for mm. HIV and mental health, a counselor, actress, <laughs> voiceover actor, and also co-author, which we'll talk about in a bit, of the book uh, Beyond and Behind the Faces of HIV and AIDS. What was that moment that hit you and you said, if I don't get up to do this, no one is coming to like pull me up? Funny thing is, I was really talking about that. I just think on Wednesday with my friend Jimmy, cause uh, dad passed away 2016. And then after that, actually a month after that, I found out that I got HIV induced dementia. 
and I'm like flip so all this time I thought I was stupid all the time I thought I was dumb and yet it's you again I'm writing four all over four times of course and it's just the same thing and then I'm like you know what baby I don't know whether I should be angry or that I should lash out because mm -hmm. I'd had the suicidal tendencies before I tried to commit suicide I'd been admitted into a what, mental institution and then I literally, literally froze. Then what Big Brother did a thing, gave me his lecture on our way from Parinia to his own right. just like that. But my, 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 my time when I really, really got to really, like, kind of get my confidence to kind of speak out was the rough moment because it broke for not for their drugs, they were they do acting and all. And I had my first acting production at Rap. Boy, those guys can act for days. They can act. So, was Rex theater like your saving grace? Yeah, like it was a place where I could like. Cause I, I was the thing is I was I'm a the thing is I grew up being shy. Like yeah, I was a shy person. Like once it got me out of the box, I now learned to communicate. And then after that, I went pushed. Cause I don't know, like the HIV part kind of add up my confidence. Then mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. to, it was actually the time I got into Washi Fame Park because of Pastor George. Like the warm environment at Global World kind of like, literally, everything good. Like the church really comes like gives you a big hug of love and so all. So church plays a big role there. Exactly. Right? And then from church, then raps comes and I'm like, okay, I see these guys. I'm like, Saka, Saka, these guys can do anything. Saka, will I be able? You know, I went there for about four weeks watching them. Oh, and they were, they were releasing their stuff and I was afraid to get lines, trust me. But it's like, I mean, come, let's up, how will I be able? And then it's like, Ching Wei is doing, like Julian is doing. Like, Larry is good in a dress. Like, dude is in a dress, but dude still doing things. <laughs> and like, I'm like, okay, these guys are so good. And how long were you with the Rips Theatre? I was for a year and we did our, like, when we managed to do our play, like, for two weeks, mm -hmm. sold out. Like, like, it... So how, how did that make you feel being part of a family it was, looking back at how you grew it up was and the family the dynamic? Beautiful. Like, 0719 104 is the WhatsApp number. We're gonna take a break and we come back and we talk about the book that Thelma is part of. It's thirty two stories, right? Yeah. Thirty two stories on um, HIV and AIDS and the book is titled Beyond and Behind the Faces of HIV and AIDS. So when we come back, you can send through your questions, your comments, or your contributions. Oh, it's starting. I'm going to try to be slow, guys. I'm very bad. Very, very sorry. It's Becky's fault. <laughs> no, I'm not giving you chocolate. No, you are ready. We'll, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. I'm so mean. Baby, tell me I'm mean.